Welcome to HDTV. You're now rocking with your boy. <laughs> South St. Petersburg homes with 325,000 price tags spark gentrification concerns. The housing market is booming in the Tampa Bay area, but some community members are worried some of those price tags for homes could have a negative impact on certain neighborhoods. An online post of a home for sale in South St. Pete on 12th Avenue South is one that's catching the attention of a lot of people, including lifelong St. Pete resident and Pinellas County Commissioner Renee Flowers. The price said $325,000 for 12th Avenue South, which is really the heart of Midtown. I just couldn't believe it, Flowers said. She posted the listing on her Facebook page for one of the three-bedroom, two-bathroom, newly-built homes for sale in the predominantly black low-income neighborhood. When you look at the average income of black people, most would not be able to afford this home. So if a black person doesn't purchase, who will? The post read. Flowers Post also pointed out some of the ripple effect this type of home sale could have for the people who live there. The racial makeup of South St. Pete would change, thus further eroding the potential for a black person to win a council seat in districts 5, 6, or 7, her post read. The newly elected county commissioner once represented the area where the four brand new homes are for sale in the 13th Street Heights area. She grew up in Jordan Park and lives about 10 minutes away. So she's familiar with the area and the people who live in that area. When you look at the revenues that persons earn in that community only because of the push for the fight for $15, which is minimum wage, are some of them now just earning $12 to $15 an hour. So that's around $27,000 a year, Flowers said. And if we go on what the federal guidelines say, that's 33% to 35% of your income should go towards housing. They could never afford it. The listings for the homes highlight the proximity to downtown and Tropicana Field. The actual neighborhood is a high crime area. It has everything typically seen in predominantly black lower income neighborhoods. There's a liquor store on the corner, a beauty supply store on one side of the street, and a barber shop on the other. The real estate agent selling the properties on 12th Avenue South is Lisa Erickson. She said the homes are priced below market value and that $325,000 price tag is for that first time home buyer. Erickson said the homes are a part of a construction project for the nonprofit Community Asset Preserv Preservation Corporation, which is CAPC. The homes are set to be sold as owner occupied, and Erickson said down payment assistance options may be offered. Commissioner Flowers said there's still a major gap in who can actually afford these homes. That's why people talk about gentrification, Flowers said. Because the persons who can afford the homes that are being sold in our community, they can't afford them. The realtor maintains these new builds in this urban area will lift up the neighborhoods. She said the high crime comes with the territory with urban living. Flowers said this not only impacts gentrification, she said it also highlights the ongoing multi-layered affordable housing crisis. She wants to do better and is calling on other local leaders to do their part. While I appreciate all of the contractors that are coming into our community, they are setting aside some units that are affordable units. She said, we've got to really look at how many developers are coming to us wanting to help the population and making sure that our dollars really go toward individuals who want to build and provide that housing for 50 to 60 AMI. The AMI is the area median income. Flower said there could be a solid strategy to help with the housing crisis. Developers are going to make money, just not as much money as they did if it was market rate, Flowers said. They need to think about this. If we can't provide a place for these people to stay, we're losing a workforce. If you lose your workforce, then other things will start to decline. We're talking our firefighters, our police officers, our teachers, our cafeteria workers, our mechanics, our truck drivers. Flowers said we're talking about people who work hard every single day to earn a living. If we don't figure out how we're going to do this, we're going to find ourselves in something that may be somewhat irreversible. And this is what they do to black communities. They've been doing this for decades. They go to the areas where it's high crime, which is mainly black areas, which they made it that way. 
They made it that way. They dropped the weapons, the drugs, all of that in the neighborhood. So now that they got this in the neighborhoods, now they're trying to raise the price up. And I know where it's at, 12th Avenue, man, that's, that's in the middle, damn near, of St. Pete. And this is what they want to do. They want to move all the brothers and sisters out or whoever whites who are low income because there's whites in that area as well. They want to move them out and make that into where the rich stay. And see, what she said was smart. Five, six, seven, and eight districts, a lot of blacks get voted on council from those areas. So if they move the blacks out of those areas, they could put a congress, I mean, a councilman in there and they can go and screw the brothers and the sisters. Now they can do what they want to do and make their laws up. This is what they've been doing in cities like LA, Chicago, New York, all the big cities, Dallas, Houston. They do this in all of those cities and they push the blacks further out. They want blacks out of the city. They want to push them all the way out so they ain't even have so they don't even have to deal with them no more. So they can raise up the prices and put their people, quote unquote, in those areas. And sometimes they put foreigners in those areas. People who have money who's from Europe or from wherever, Africa, wherever they're from, they come in and they buy homes and they're settled in that area. Then you're gonna see a lot of gates gonna start coming up because they wanna keep your ass out. That's what they wanna do. And they've been doing this forever. They've been doing this since I was a kid, even before I was before me. My sister was a kid. They done this all the time. So what we have to do is fight back. And that's what they have to do in that area. Fight back and tell them you cannot put a home that's three hundred and twenty five thousand dollars market price in an area where it is way less than that. <laughs> no black family going to they know what they're doing. That corporation, CAPC, they know what they're doing. They're doing what the corporate people do. Come in, it's the same thing when Walmart came in. Everyone in St. Pete fought all day to keep Walmart out. When they brought Walmart in, they destroyed all the small businesses. My mom's business also got hit with that because people, they're too busy thinking about what they're preaching to you, the glamour and glitz of, sh of stuff and not getting the substance, which down the line, you will get affected by this ripple effect because there's gonna be kids who work in that area locally, they're not going to get all them jobs. They're only going to hire certain people for those jobs. So that's what's happening. They're trying to gentrify the neighborhoods and they've been doing it everywhere. They've done it in each city, each town and everything. So we have to stand up and fight back and push these developers out trying to overprices. We have to do it the right way. We have to go through channels and go through different laws and that figuring out how to keep them out so thank you for listening we are out deezy